Hello and welcome to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session with Get Oiling. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Get Oiling, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. Really glad to hear today. We are so excited to have you all here and to also have Julie and Colin with us today, as always. Hi, guys. Hello. How's it going? So today we are talking about leveraging the power of scarcity of time to increase your registrations for your events, as well as sales on your sales pages, if that is something that you are using. We're going to get into sales pages a bit here. We're going to learn more about how you as a Young Living Brand Partner might want to utilize sales pages on your website. And we'll talk about how we can also use some of the same principles uh, to help increase your registrations for workshops in, in person or online in different events that you may be hosting. So as you're coming in to join us, let us know where in the world you are. We're so excited to have you here. This is a live opportunity for us to get together and share and learn new things. This is for anyone who is a brand partner in Young Living who is interested in working smarter. And of course, for all of our value members of the Get Oiling community, uh, for you to dig in a little deeper and learn a little bit more about how you can get the most out of your Get Oiling system. So again, welcome. We've got folks from all over the world here today, as always. We're just so thrilled to have you. Uh, if you're watching in our Facebook group, leave us a comment there. And then, of course, if you are watching this in the future as a recording on YouTube, leave us a comment there, too. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, we're going to get out of slides here, or out of slides, out of video and into slides. Uh, and we're going to share some, some cool stuff today. And then we are going to get into uh, some, some demos. We are actually going to go and uh, and show you some cool stuff. I have some resources to share with you. Uh, so really looking forward to getting into this with you today. So let me come over here and it'll let me share my screen. All right, perfect. So again, today we are talking about creating sales pages with countdown timers and Q&A. Uh, so if you have been on our recent calls, you may have seen that we actually do have these new features uh, as of now in our Get Oiling system. These are um, a really cool thing that you can start playing around with and using on your existing pages. And we'll get into how you can really use them effectively here on today's call. So we're going to first uh, let Greg show us uh, an update, just a quick update. It's a really uh, cool feature that'll help you in a number of cases. Uh, if you are using videos and get oiling, Greg's going to show you a quick update there. Then we'll talk about how, as a Young Living brand partner, you might want to go about using sales and registration pages. And then we'll talk about how to use them, how to create them. Uh, we'll go into the specific examples of each, and we'll talk about how you can use countdown timers and Q&A sections on those pages to really help increase those conversions, getting more people signed up for events, and of course, more people sold if that's the goal of the page you're setting up. And as always, if you've got live questions here, we have live help and Q&A available as always, because this is the live work session. If you are here and you need help with something, whether it has to do with today's topic or not, we welcome you to head over to the Q&A section here on Zoom and ask away. We've got uh, the founder of this system, the creator of the system, and then of course, uh, the two people who really know it better than anybody else that's not named Greg, and that's Colin and Julie. So head over there if you have questions. Our team is here to help. You can go to Get Oiling dot com slash weekly work session if you would like to join us on a future call like this one and if you would like to work together on a call like this we have space that we set aside every single week to work with you if you need it if you have you know questions that you know need several follow-up questions if you need to talk through something walk through something this is an opportunity to do it it is free to you as a get oiling community member so take advantage of this you'll be able to work with us at the end of an upcoming live call like this one and if you would like to just have somebody do some of this work for you, you can go to getoiling.com slash concierge, meet our incredibly talented team and learn how they can help you with whatever project, with, with whatever project you have uh, dreamed up. All right. So before I get into this, um, let's go over to Greg and uh, learn about really quickly this brand new, exciting uh, thing that we have uh, as an update in our videos. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Ashley. So let's share my screen here. Looks like I got it. Um, so just in case you don't know, I know there's a handful of people that this came up in the Facebook group who don't know we have video upload and hosting. Um, we do. That's, I don't know, several months old at this point. But under the content library menu in the system, there's a videos link uh, and you can upload and host so you don't need a third party 
video host uh, anymore. So the change is this little download link right here. So um, as of about yesterday, give or take, depending on, on your account, uh, but as of about yesterday, most people now for any new videos being uploaded going forward, you'll be able to download the original. So essentially you'll be able to have a backup. Now your people can't, the people who are viewing this can't view, can't download that video. There's no way for them to do that. They can only stream it like they did before. But this then also provides essentially a backup for you. I mean, it's probably always a good idea to keep that in your, uh, you know, in a safe place somewhere. Maybe you've got a hard drive you're storing it on or, or some other cloud storage or something like that. Can't ever hurt to have another backup, if, especially if it's an important video. However, uh, this is yet another uh, source of a backup. So just looking at like this video library that we have here, the ones that say download the original video file and have this little cloud icon that's uh, clickable, you'll be able to download. But there's uh, some of the older ones and probably most of the videos in your your accounts now will not be able to be downloaded to have this little grayed out icon and I won't do that. That's because the original actually wasn't even saved. Um, but going forward, now it does save it, uh, just one extra nicety. And that has allowed some people to, you know, drop their third party video host because they were using that as a backup as well. So anyway, it's a tiny little icon, but it can have some big implications. So I just wanted to share that today. And that's, that's what's new. Awesome. Thank you for that, Greg, and for doing all you do to make things so much easier for us. Uh, let's get back into today's training. All right. So head over into the chat. Let me know, do you have workshops or events that you offer? Do you have online or offline workshops or events that you would like for people to join, right? Are you offering classes, make and takes? Are you giving actual workshops? Are they free? Are they paid? What does that look like for you? If this is something that you're doing, you're going to want to stay tuned. What about paid offers? Let me know in the chat. Do you have paid offers? Are you a coach, a consultant? Uh, do you offer programs or challenges, things that are paid that folks uh, can pay for access to? This, of course, would be in addition to what you do uh, with Young Living, right? Awesome. Looks like we've got a lot of events. We've got some free, some paid. Fantastic. So if what you're promoting is something that's time sensitive, meaning this cart is going to close at a date and time, because this is a live program and the date is going to, you have a start date. And if no, everybody's in the door by then, then they get started. If you aren't in the door by then, then you got to wait till next time, right? If you have a workshop or something that you're offering that's live, of course, you can't have folks registering for it after the fact. Um, but in either of these cases where you have a time sensitive offer, you can use the clock to your advantage. And this has massive implications for the conversion rate which is essentially the effectiveness of the pages that you're using because you're you're kind of tapping into psychological phenomenon that really help to assist people in making a decision quickly as opposed to putting it off, right? And maybe not making a choice. So countdown timers are a newer feature in Get Oiling we're gonna talk about today and how to use them on sales pages and on pages where you're collecting registrations. I've got a couple of examples here that reflect some resources that you guys are gonna have access to. Uh, but these countdown timers, again, are really effective at helping to push your ideal person if they're ready toward making that decision, right? If they're on the fence, it helps to kind of knock them off the fence and over to your side. So let's talk about how we can use these countdown timers. We can use these two or either of these pages. We can use them to promote registration, right? Or to sell seats for our live events like classes or make and takes and workshops. And then of course, if you have group programs or other offers that have a set start date, then you can more effectively fill them if you do use these, um, these countdown timer features. So we're going to start with sales pages. Uh, now, how many of you, maybe just let me know with a raise of a hand, how many of you have a sales page? You have a page on your website that sells an offer that you have. Awesome. That's just a couple of us. That's okay. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about what it looks like to have one and what is included. And we will actually walk through a real life example that you have access to in your Get Oiling account right now. And of course, uh, I do have a modified version of that that we'll talk about today that leverages this uh, countdown timer feature. 
So sales pages in Get Oiling as a brand partner are going to be something that you can use to sell your own offers, right? So sales pages are not meant to sell products that you're referring your, your customers to for Young Living. This would be something that is in addition. So maybe you offer a group program that is based in, you know, wellness or something that you are trained in or that you are an expert in, right? Uh, something that you are selling outside of Young Living products. And what these sales pages allow you to do is to sell, to inform, and to take payment all on the same page. This is going to be great for things like courses, programs, or even services that you offer. And it's an interactive way for you to be selling to your leads 24-7, 365 without you having to be there to make the pitch. So what's in a great sales page? Bit of a list, but let's get into it. And I will again be walking you through an example here shortly. First, we've got to have a clear and compelling offer that relates to the outcome. So if someone buys the thing that you're selling, what happens for them when they get the benefit? What's the thing that they really want that your offer is going to help them achieve? Then you've got to have a clear and compelling call to action. If you can tell them everything on the planet about what you're selling, but if you don't tell them to buy now, they're not going to buy now, right? I also want to encourage you to look at this process of creating a page like this as engaging in a conversation with your ideal client. Obviously, you aren't there with them to speak back and forth. But if you watched our previous training on creating your bio or your about me page, it's the same kind of philosophy that we're following where we are anticipating the response in their mind with each thing that we say, right? So if we say, here's what I do, their natural question would be what? And then your next section answers whatever that question would be. Right. So this is sort of a back and forth. It's a conversation. And uh, and and I'll show you again here in a moment what that looks like. We also want to be able to answer objections on this page where you anticipate them coming up, because, again, this is a conversation, but you're not present for it. You're going to be allowing the page to really hold the conversation for you with your person. You also want to make sure that you're including a breakdown of what your offer includes and what each part is worth. That's kind of stacking the value of each thing that they're getting. Uh, that's kind of preparing them to really uh, perceive the value of what you're offering very highly. Include bonuses here and their value as well. And then finally, you will, of course, want to stack up everything that it's worth, but then tell them what you're actually selling it for, right? You'll also want to include testimonials from clients wherever possible, case studies, stories, things like this go an incredibly long way. Facts tell stories sell. So anything that you can glean from your clients to put onto your sales pages is going to be very helpful to you. Then, of course, you need to have a section that maybe has your bio uh, with relevant information about why they should work with you and maybe why a, around this particular topic you are the person that they would need to invest their money in to get the benefit that they want. And then the fine print. Do you offer guarantees? Do you offer refund policies, et cetera? These are all the things that you're going to want to have in a great sales page. Now let's talk a little bit about registration pages before we go and take a look at both of these examples. First, um, I want you to see that this is a, a, a really simple page where you have your countdown timer and then you've got a place for someone to uh, add their name and email and save their seat. Uh, this is going to be a really great option to use for you. Again, if you have a live event that's coming up uh, and you can, of course, use this example that I'm going to show to you uh, as a way to take payment as well. So if you wanted to maybe have a simplified sales page, this would be a great option for you. If you set it up for payments, uh, you would just need to make a couple of modifications to it. Now, registration pages in Get Oiling are going to be great to use for in-person and virtual events. They can be free or paid. And of course, you get to sell in form and collect that registration and maybe even the payment on the same page. This is gonna be really great for workshops, classes, master classes. And if you were to use this as a template, as a, a sort of simplified sales page, then something that is perhaps a like a low cost offer, something that's maybe a couple of hundred dollars, uh, that is something that you could use this for as well. And of course, again, it's an interactive way to invite people to your events 24 seven, 365 without you having to be there to invite them. 
So what's in a great registration page? We need a clear and compelling offer. That's the outcome of, I had spent my time to attend this workshop. What do I get out of it? What does it do for me? What do I get to have become as a result of getting the information that will be in this workshop? We also, of course, need a clear and compelling call to action. Save your seat now. Seats are limited, right? Time is limited. Grab your seat now. Then we'll want to tell them what they'll learn, the big picture benefits, right? So uh, we're going to learn this thing, and this is why it's important to you, that thing and why it's important to you, and the other thing and why it's important to you. Uh, this is another great place to include testimonials from your clients. And then again, of course, a quick bio and why they should work with you in context of the benefit that you're offering here, right? Your expertise. And then FAQs, right? Any questions someone might need to have, like, is this going to be recorded? Or, you know, what is your policy for X, Y, or Z thing? Can I bring a friend? Things like that uh, you'll want to have for your FAQ section. So let's go and take a look at these in action. Uh, I have a couple of pages here in a resource bundle that we can share with you guys. I'm going to switch my share here and show you what the resource bundle looks like. And I'm going to claim them into the Jane account. So this resource bundle includes a sales page with a countdown timer and a workshop registration page with a countdown timer. So we're just going to click to claim the bundle and then we can go and get to work. So let's talk through the sales page first. Now this is based off of an existing sales page template that you have in your system already, but we have an addition here of a countdown timer. But since we haven't really done a sales page training here on our uh, Get Oiling, um, in our Get Oiling library, let's go ahead and take a quick walkthrough of what's included in a sales page and what can make yours really effective, right? So this call out here is really going to tell the person who lands here who this is for. This is a great opportunity to call them out. If you are this, you're gonna to wanna to check this out. Calling all whoever your ideal person is, right? Make sure that you're telling them that this is for them. And we have here on the page copy that really um, gives you an idea, prompts you to, um, you know, to put certain things in certain places, right? So I'm not gonna go through every single line of copy on this page, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of go through here and take note of what we're telling you or prompting you to place in these spaces, right? And you can actually see as you go through and make your modifications, you can preview what your page will look like, right? Now, one thing that I want to go ahead and draw your attention to quickly is this countdown timer. So this is actually inside of an existing section. You do have the ability, if you wanted to create a different countdown timer entirely, you could go to add a section, click interactive, and then select countdown timer, and it will add one right here, and you can make your modifications to it. But I'm going to stick with the one that I have included here uh, in this um in this template, and I'm gonna show you how to make modifications to it. Now, one of the first things that I wanna call your attention to is that if you're using a countdown timer, whatever it is that you're offering on this page, uh, one would assume is going to expire when the timer runs out. So one of the first things that you wanna make sure that you have uh, in place here is where you want them to go whenever this countdown expires. Now, there's a couple of places you could send them, but one of the best places you could send them is to a wait list, right? Now we do have, uh, and I can go back here and show you in our page templates, uh, we do have a wait list um, template right here. So here's a wait list page. And you can actually see that this was the base of um, the registration page that I showed you uh, and we'll be going into detail in shortly. Setting up a wait list, so maybe letting someone know the doors are closed, but if you would like you know, to, to know when they reopen, put your information in here uh, and you can actually preview what this looks like. If you have something like this in place, and again, this is a template in your system that you can use, uh, then of course you can be really selling uh, the, um, the program that is now closed uh, to folks who would want to maybe buy it in the future, except what they're going to do right now is they're, they're going to get access to the wait list. Maybe you put a freebie in your campaign attached to this, what have you. But whatever this page is that you set up as a wait list, that's where you're going to want to send people right here. Another option would just simply be to send them to a page that says 
sorry, registration is closed. Uh, and then maybe some links to follow you on social or something like that. So make sure that this is here because when that countdown timer expires, when people go to the link that is uh, the link on your website for this sales page, they will be redirected to that other page that you specify right here. Now here we can change the color of the background, or keep it transparent. We can change the color of the text, right? On this particular page, I wanted to have a transparent background with, um, with white font. And you do have some design choices here. You can choose to make these, um, these countdown timers larger or smaller, totally up to you. And as I'll be showing you in, um, in the next page example, you can actually using the element style editor, make modifications, style modifications to these individual uh, sort of sections here with the days, hours, minutes, seconds, all right? So this is our countdown timer. Now here we introduce. So up here we said, here's your ideal. Hey, you're, you're the person that wants this. I'm telling you a little bit about why this really is something that you're gonna wanna check out. And so they're like, okay, tell me more. So they scroll, then they see, oh my gosh, I need to make a decision in this amount of time. And now you get to introduce your program and its selling points. Now, if they don't say, yes, I'm ready. let me just go to the preview version of this. If they don't say, yes, I'm ready, uh, then they can keep scrolling, right? But if they do say, yes, I'm ready, uh, you wanna have your payment options set up and we can actually take them straight to uh, payment here. And that'll be the final thing I show you about setting up this page. So if they aren't ready, then they're gonna keep scrolling. So we need to really come back here and say, hey, if this is you, then you are in the right place, right? Because they landed here, they learned about the big benefit, they saw that they could get it and they didn't say yes yet. So let's go ahead and remind them why this might be for them, right? Talk about the pain point you've uncovered and then paint the picture of what life could look like if that pain was gone, if their goal was realized. And again, here we have dialogue with your ideal person, right? Um, telling them that all they really need to do is make a decision and start doing the things that your program offers. So we're gonna talk about our program here and really break down what is included. So in this case, here are our phases and here's what we do in each of these steps, right? Our call to action is going to, if they're ready, take them down to the section where the payment plans are broken down. We'll have our bonuses here. Uh, we'll tell them more about what they'll get. And again, we'll have that call to action to jump down to the payment section. And of course, again, we're going through each of these uh, where you've got the opportunity to introduce your testimonials from clients, break down your different payment options if you have different payment options. And then we have a frequently asked questions section here. So you can see here that we can collapse our frequently asked questions or we could expand them. And I'm gonna actually take you to how we can modify this section here because this is a, um, a change that we made to the original template in the system. So if we scroll down here, you can see that I've kept a black background here. So I created a, a, a new section here, gave it a black background, and you can actually see the background color here. <clears throat> and then if you click on our FAQ here, oops, I need to be in my content editor, click on your FAQ and you can actually see how you can modify the style. Now I've chosen to make the, the background color black and the font color white, just in keeping with the design of the page. And I've done that on both, but you do have the option to change these, right? So this can be a gray color if you wanted to, or you could choose to have these um, a bit different, right? So if we wanted to do it this way, show you what that would look like. And it does modify uh, the entire uh, section, right? So all of the FAQs are going to be the same. So if I get down here to it, here we go. So you can see when we expand, you've got that lighter colored background. So you have design options there um, that you can play around with to your liking. Um, now we've addressed their frequently asked questions. We tell them what's going to happen after they get started. We tell them what they're going to walk away with. And then we give them really the, the this or that, right? You're either going to move forward dealing with the same things that you have, or you're gonna make a commitment today and you're gonna get started toward what you really want, of course, with your program.
tell a little bit about you in this about section. We do have a mobile and um, desktop version. We can put our refund policies, guarantees, et cetera, in this section here. Again, getting into this is for you if you're this, this is not for you if you're that. More testimonials and those payment plans. Our final call to action is down here at the bottom. And our final thing that we need to do on this page is a couple of setup features in the settings here. We wanna make sure on a sales page that you aren't showing the header and footer. The reason for this is that when you are having a sales conversation with someone, you want the only options to be yes or no in the conversation, right? And so carrying that philosophy over to a sales page, we want the only click option to be to get started, right? We don't want to have links that go to other pages on our website or to our social media or to really any other place. We only want them to engage with what's on this page while they're here and to say yes, right? So that's why we do not include the header and footer here. Now under leads, on our capture form, we're saying choose your payment option and let's get started. And you can get into payments here. <clears throat> and of course, if you have a payment processor here, uh, you uh, and, and you do wanna make sure you have that set up, of course, if this is a sales page that you wanna use, uh, you can go in and set up your different payment options. So if you have payment option one, payment option two, payment option three, uh, you can set those up here. And we do have other trainings where we talk in depth about payments in the system. So you wanna just make sure that this is set up to collect those payments. You're sending them to a confirmation page after they've purchased. You've got any kind of campaigns attached where you're making that fulfillment on their purchase. Uh, and then finally, do again, make sure if you are using this countdown timer up here in the second section or third actually, uh, that you are sending them to some kind of a wait list or other page after uh, this countdown is completed. All right, so that's your sales page. Let's go take a look at our uh, at our other page that we have claimed in our bundle. And if you ever want to know how to get back to your resource bundles that you've claimed, you can go to resource bundles, go to my claims, and you can actually find uh, the ones that you've claimed most recently. So let's go take a look at our workshop registration with Countdown Timer. This is going to be I think really useful for a lot of us if we are offering uh, any kind of live events. Here we go. All right, so this is really simple. Uh, we've got the name of our workshop. Here's what our workshop offers. And then here's some more information. So maybe the date, right? And a little bit more about what um, they might get out of the workshop. Here we've got our countdown timer, and you can see that I've made some, some significant modifications here to it, right? Um, you can actually see there's a background. The, um, the border is really similar to the border. Uh, the border on the numbers is really similar to the border here. And, um, and you'll see this kind of reflected elsewhere on the page. So um, this shows up here, and I'll show you how I made those modifications. This is an example of using your um, countdown timer inside of a multi-column section. So this is a two-column section with a form on one side and with a countdown timer on the other. Now, this countdown timer, I have set up to have a transparent background uh, with specific text color. And I don't have this set up yet, but again, you're going to want to maybe go to a um, to some kind of a page on your website that could be a wait list, uh, and uh, you could also maybe send them to the just the events list on your website uh, in the event that this um, specific one uh, the registration is closed. But do make sure again that you have something here so that you're sending them to a correct place after the fact. Now, how did I go about? making changes to this um, to this countdown timer. Here's what I did. I go to edit element styles, and then I went and I selected each of these one by one. And in this case, I gave just a little bit of padding to the bottom and to the left and right. And I repeated that for each one of these, all four of these guys right here. Then further down, I changed the borders. Again, for each of them, I gave them a color and I gave them just a little bit of width, right? And I did that for all of them. 
so that they, um, you know, showed up nicely on the page and they um, reflect the design of the rest of the page, right? Because you can see again on the published page, the, um, the form like this. All right, so the workshop here obviously has copy in this section that you can't see unless you're in the settings of the page. But what we're doing is we're giving them a compelling call to action to register now and maybe adding a bit more information about what it'll do for them why it's the time to act. Alternately, you could also put um, date and location-based information here as well. Here's where you edit that. That's under the leads tab in your page settings. You can see that that is right here. Now, as we go further down the page, like I mentioned in our slides previously, we wanna make sure that we're clear on what they're going to get out of this, right? There's the compelling reason that they would get started here and we put that up at the very top. And then we break down what else they'll get out of it, right? So you want this, you want that, you want that, you're in the right place. We're gonna talk about these things. Then we talk about you and maybe this is your bio. Maybe you've got a little bit of your own story, your case study uh, here that you might want to include uh, to show people that you know what you're talking about and that you're someone they ought to be listening to. You've got a great spot here to include any client stories or testimonials. And then here again, we have an FAQ section that I have set up to be uh, design-wise in keeping with the rest of the color scheme on the page. So you can see there's that dark blue there. Uh, we've got the dark blue as the background up top here, right? So that is set up here. You can add any frequently asked questions for your, uh, or anticipated questions for your event. And then finally, your final call to action. Registration closes soon. Don't miss out. Save my seat. And we send them right back up here to the top where they can put in their name and email and register. Now, a couple of quick things. Uh, first, again, uh, really important that you have a redirect set up here. Send them to the right place uh, when the countdown ti timer expires. And then you want to make sure that you um, are going into your page settings. Uh, getting clear on that lead capture message here uh, and in the um, what lead does after registration or what happens after registration. This is where you're going to want to attach your campaign to give them details about the event, tag them for the event, and then maybe send them to a confirmation page after the fact. All right. So that is how you set up and create those pages that you'll use for sales and registration, making use of that countdown timer and those FAQ sections. So I'm excited to hear if you guys have questions about this. We do have the resource bundle for these two pages in the discussion right now, and I'll be sure to put that uh, below the video uh, on um, on YouTube once once that is up in our system. Let me see. Tina says the different payment options. Is this something we can do with Stripe? I've tried setting it up. It wasn't successful yet. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the integrated payments on our pages are, is going to be Stripe. So you do want to make sure that you have a Stripe account set up. Uh, and then you, of course, are going to connect that to your Get Oiling account. Quick note, if you have not set up Stripe yet for your Get Oiling account, and you can set up a Stripe account separate of Get Oiling. It is a different service, right? That is a payment processor that's separate. But if you want to connect it to your Get Oiling account, I want you to please make sure that you go into Customize My Site and that you do not display the CBD, um, the CBD uh, theme, the built-in theme. And that's just because Stripe, regardless of how many times we tell them that Young Living brand partners do not sell CBD, Young Living sells CBD, we don't, we refer people to Young Living, right? No matter how many times we say that, they don't want to hear it. <laughs> so make sure that CBD is not something that shows up on your site because they are um, not cool with, uh, with, with that uh, phrase. Let's see, if you wanted to use PayPal uh, for something that you're selling, you absolutely can um, go create a PayPal button in your PayPal account and embed a PayPal button on a page that you have. Just know that you'll need to use some kind of connecting automation service like Zapier, for instance, to have the data from that sale go back and talk to your Get Oiling account, right? Or you'll just need to, you know, kind of follow whatever your steps are for someone who's purchased on a manual basis uh, if they have um, purchased with PayPal. 
All right. Um, okay. So there are a couple questions here from Donna that don't relate specifically to our uh, sales pages and workshop pages. Guys know that all questions are welcome. Uh, so whatever you have, please make sure you put those into the Q&A and we'll get to them. Uh, so Donna, you were asking about lesson 11 marketing mastery workshop. Uh, and for just to show folks uh, where to go, if you want to learn about the marketing mastery workshop, uh, I'm going to head over here and show you right now. That's going to be under the Success Academy, Online Resources and Courses, <clears throat> and the Marketing Mastery Workshop is right here, right? Marketing Mastery Workshop. <clears throat> so lesson 11 in there, I am talking about um, giving uh, people reason to set up a free account with Young Living, right? If somebody isn't ready to buy today, go ahead and get them into your account. Um, this is going to be applicable to you based on um, the country you're in and whether or not Young Living has that feature available. This is something that is available in the US. Um, I think it might be available in Canada. You guys are way more first in uh, Young Living's current sort of policies and operating than I am. So uh, if you know, please feel free to pop into the chat uh, and confirm uh, if in your market, if it's non-US market, if creating a free and living account is possible. In the event that you are in a market where you can't just go set up a free account, what I would do is just get their information uh, and uh, and then set up the time and get them to commit to the date and time that you're going to sit down together and get their account set up. Contact cards is at the note section of the contacts and get oiling. So if we go to our contacts and get oiling, and this is another question from Donna Kay, um, these are contact cards. All of these are contact cards. So if we were to go and search for someone like me, uh, then we could find this is a contact card. And then when we open the contact card, there's all of this other great stuff on it. So that's the terminology. This is a contact card. And then when you open the contact card, meaning you click my name, then you can see your past actions where you can do things like add a note, right? Maybe from a meeting or a text or you sent them happy mail or whatever it was that you did. So contact cards are where you do all of the things um, for an individual contact, like, like leaving notes. And you are requesting as well uh, to expand on the statement issues in our own mindset tend to show up as objections. All right. So this is uh, kind of getting into the, the depth of that marketing mastery <laughs> workshop, uh, but I will get into this really quickly. So uh, basically, when we're selling something, or really when we're communicating an idea at all, if we are at all unsure about what we're talking about, the point that we're making, the veracity of something that we're sharing, that gets projected through the, like just subconsciously through the way we communicate. Um, it's, it's our energy, it's our tone, it can be your body language, your facial expression. This is a little different for everybody. But you've been in a conversation with somebody before where you kind of could tell that they didn't necessarily buy or believe in what they were telling you, right? That's kind of what I'm getting at. If you are going into a conversation where you are maybe sharing the Young Living business opportunity and you have any sort of um, doubts in your mind or if you have any insecurities about maybe where you stand with what you're doing, those things have a potential to come out when you're communicating, um, not in an, like a, in an overt way, but it can come out in a perceivable way. Uh, and often that will create some of the objections that, um, that we face, right? If you, if you do face objections uh, when you are sharing, a lot of that can stem from our own doubts, insecurities, or just basically places where we might need to focus some effort on our own belief and our own way of communicating, right? I hope that that helps and I hope that that makes sense. <laughs> Feel free to ask follow-up questions. Um, okay, Rocio says, I need a one-on-one -on -one person to slowly show me how to do a vault to add more pictures and can't seem to get any leads and how to add a class. I'm a visual person and have disabilities. So uh, Rocio, this is 100% something um, that we would love to help you with. Let me actually show you a really great place to go in a small environment uh, for you. Uh, if you go to Success Academy here, get help from a real person, uh, you can actually um, get on a group help call right here. You can click this. You can pick a time. These are always 
small groups, right? And uh, and so you can actually hop onto one of these calls and Pam runs them and she's brilliant and 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 really easy to work with. So I would I would highly recommend that. Um, because it's more dedicated to like, we're going to solve each problem one step at a time. Uh, so highly recommend that. So, um, and of course, if you have a specific thing, I, I can't necessarily get into every single walkthrough on, um, on this call. Um, but um, if you would also like to, if you could go to um, getoiling.com forward slash website review. That's how you can actually reserve time. So you can even give me all of your questions ahead of time. And then we can plan for maybe next Thursday, if you wanted to do that, if you sign up for a live work review next Thursday, uh, then I can actually walk you through every single one of those and I could be prepared for it. Uh, and and, and we, can, we can knock those out. But I think that you might even be able to sit down might be able to sit down with Pam sooner than that. It's up to you. <laughs> so, um, and I, give me a moment, Rocio, if you're open to it, I can bring you out to, to chat here live on this call potentially as well. So maybe just leave a message here <clears throat> in the chat and uh, let me know if you would like to come out and speak and, uh, and, and we can, we can see how much we can get through on, on today's call. Otherwise you're more than welcome to set something up on a future call. All right, Susan says, is there a recording on how to use Canva in your templates? I struggle with getting pictures into the template. So we do have a lot of trainings that incorporate the use of Canva. Um, we do have one in particular that focuses on Canva and that is actually a guest training from uh, a member of our community. So if you go to live training and replays and you type in the word Canva, you will see um, this one is talking about Canva integration and get oiling. We talk about branding here. Uh, so there's, um, you know, page design. All of these are going to be good resources here where you see that we're talking about Canva. You're going to see some tips there where that's concerned. Generally speaking, where you find a template in our system, and I'll actually go back and show you here. Um, right over here in, um, in our pages using one of the ones that we uh, that I shared with you today. So maybe the registration, is that what I called that? Workshop registration, here we go. So at the very bottom here of this page, I have a hidden section here that has a, um, that has a link for you that we can open up where you can see our Canva templates. So these are the Canva templates for that page that we were just on. So we're going to, use this for, well, you're gonna see that you can just claim and use it. I'm still in my account where this was created. But essentially what you wanna make sure that you're doing, and I'll go back and, and find that page I was just on. Here we go. So first you wanna identify, you know, what are the images, right? And then you can actually go find them. Usually there will be templates included. So in this case, um, you just want to make sure that if you are substituting an image here, that you are making it as similar as possible. And in this case, filling the entire space, right? So dragging and filling as much as possible. Um, you know, if, if you need to put an image in here of you, then, you know, you're going to want to upload your photo and then you're going to be able to, um, and actually I was... I was chatting with a member of our community yesterday with Sean uh, and uh, and was helping her with a couple of things here. And so you can see she has a background. You see that gray gradient background. I want her to be able to pop off of any background uh, just like we have in the example here, right? You can see there's no background of that image. So this is where I would actually go to edit the photo, remove the background. And then importantly, you see she's floating here in the center. So I would actually go over here and have her fill up the entire section of the page and then save this as a, um, save this as an image with a uh, transparent background, right? And then I would be able to put it here. So really the gist is, is you wanna try to use our templates as you know wherever possible uh, and, and just try to take note of whether or not there uh, is a transparent background such as in this case. Uh, and you could always, if you're on a desktop, you can click and grab an image and move it and actually see these are actually transparent backgrounds, right? This one, again, you see her, you don't see a square around her. You just see her. 
So you can actually see whether or not the um, template images that you're using or kind of the design that you're looking to em emulate doesn't have a background. Okay. Don't have Stripe yet. Is removing the CBD info clear and setting up the sales uh, or is there a video on how to do it in the academy? This is great, but moving a little fast. It's actually really simple. So uh, if you go over to, I'll show you exactly where you go. I believe it is, customize my site, right? Or somebody tell me if I'm wrong about this. <laughs> um, Built-in themes, here we go, right here. Automatically, I think typically, if you're in a market with CBD, we set, it says show CBD products, you can uncheck this. And we actually say here as well, um, we've got a little hover here that says, if you're processing payments for your member area, uh, this allows you to hide CBD products on the website themes, lowers the likelihood that your payment processing account would be closed or disputed. Um, so make sure that you just uncheck this. That's how that works, just uncheck it. Is there a fee to the group calls? The help from a live person with Pam? Nope. <laughs> nope, that is uh, that is something that's included uh, for you as a member of our community. So if you can't make it on a Thursday, then that is absolutely something uh, that you should uh, take advantage of. Okay. So setting up a free account in Young Living is basically going to be, and again, this is US-based, uh, you're going to be sharing your, um, you would be sharing your link uh, to, you know, just to a Young Living page, and they would go to set up an account. Basically, people have the ability, there's a workflow on the Young Living website. I don't have it memorized. This isn't something that I do. Uh, but um, there is a way on the US-based Young Living website to have somebody sign up for a free account. So maybe you, you can play around with it, right? You can go to Young Living, um, maybe open it in a private browser or something like that and use your link. Uh, a cheat code to this is to go to yourgetoilingwebsite.com forward slash start. That will take you to a page that's coded to you. Uh, and then you can you can actually see how that, that becomes possible. Become a member, I think, is, is what that looks like there. Uh, and again, in the US market, they're basically signing up to be a customer without placing an order. So it is possible. Okay, I wanted to see, because Rocio, I, I would love to bring you out if you're open to chat. Can you um, maybe let me know if that's the case? And I would be thrilled to, to bring you out here. I just wanted to make sure that I had the time on this call to answer all of your questions if possible. And I do have that space here, I think, uh, if you'd like. So um, feel free again, if you'd like to, uh, to come out to let me know. In the meantime, Donna, I see your hand up. Uh, can you let me know in the chat if you're wanting to maybe talk about something or talk through something here? Uh, uh, Donna, I, I, there's two Donnas on the call here. <laughs> okay, perfect. I got one hand up. Awesome. Um, Adonza Harrison, I'm not in the state, so I don't have the things that Stripe requires. Um, that's okay, actually. Um, I mean, is Stripe a US-based thing only or like Stripe have limited markets? Greg, do you can, can you speak to sort of payment yeah, options? Because I mean, we have global members who take payments, you know, and sell stuff all the time. Right. But so there's a couple, I mean, Stripe does support a big number of countries. If you're not in one that they support, there is a couple of workarounds. Um, they, first one is they offer this program called Atlas, which allows you to somehow work around that by creating a corporation in one of their countries that supports it or that they support. And then the other option, uh, there's a way to get like a bank account through, there's a, a bank called Wise. Uh, I think it's called Wise. Anyway, um, if you email into us, we can dig up the information on that. There's a way you can set up essentially what amounts to uh, a US bank account, and then you can still pay, take payments even if you're not in a supported country. So there are a couple of workarounds available. I just don't okay. know them offhand. Awesome. Um, Adonza, if you want to share maybe where you're located in the chat and if anyone else, because I'm seeing, you know, we've got folks in Germany, Germany, Canada, et cetera, that are using Stripe, um, they can, um, you know, maybe there's somebody here in, in a market similar to yours. Uh, you're in Grand Cayman. Okay. 
Um, I'm not, obviously I'm not a hundred percent sure on what that looks like. What I would do is actually go to Stripe's website and, uh, and then maybe see like, you know, looking through their help articles, you know, what are the different options? Because like Greg said, there are sort of partner banks and things like that, uh, that they work with that might, um, allow you to, to work with that. All of that said, if it comes down to it and you are in a market that for some reason you can't use Stripe, um, then there are 100% ways for you to take whatever your payment processor is, wherever you're based, and um, wherever you can set up a payment for something, you have the ability uh, in every case that I'm aware of to, imp to grab a code from that website that will create a button that you can just put onto your page, just like you would put a form or something like that onto a page on your Get Oiling site. So while it might not create the perfect streamlined effect, just, you know, as a first go around, uh, there are definitely workarounds uh, that could get you started. Okay, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that frustration with them, I, I understand. All right, Rebecca, what is the advantage of having a Young Living account set up with no order? Um, why would you want to do this? So that it really is it's sort of like a if all else fails. So again, this is this is speaking to and there was actually a training that we did uh, with Janelle. Gosh, it was several years ago, I think at this point. Uh, but she had a massive couple of months of signing people up. She essentially had like an Instagram uh, reel that went viral. And, um, and so she was just getting people started left and right, signing up tons of people. And one of the things that she did was if somebody wasn't ready to place an order right then, then she was showing them how they could just go ahead and sign up for a free account. It's not the most, uh, in terms of the pay, the pay plan, it's not the most advantageous way to get somebody started, for sure. However, if they're not ready, why not go ahead and have them as your customer for when they are ready, right? So if you've done the work to get them to the point and they're like, you know, for whatever reason, you know, can't buy it today, can't do it today, whatever, go ahead and sign them up as a customer because now Young Living is going to start marketing to them. And when they when they respond to something, they're going to sign into their account, which is coded to you. So it's, it's just kind of a fail safe. Let's see. All right, uh, Donna McGraw, your hand is up. There was another Donna that had her hand up previously and I was asking if she wanted to chat. Yours is still up. Let me know if you would like uh, to uh, to chat as well. Okay, Cornelia has got a good answer here. Wise is a multi-currency service. You can receive money from uh, different countries and different currencies. So that uh, is something that you may want to check out uh, that could, could make Stripe work for you potentially. Thank you for that, Cornelia. And this may be something as well to... Um, uh, for for you, Adonzo, or anyone else who's maybe having issues with uh, with Stripe, and you're in different markets outside of you know U.S., Canada, etc., um, or Germany, I know it works in Germany. Uh, maybe go into the Get Oiling Facebook group, and members of our community who are in different markets might be able to uh, to give you some insights on how they are going about offering things. Rebecca says, also, we have them in our good oiling system to invite them to our newsletter. That's right. Yeah. If somebody, even if somebody doesn't place an order, if you like, basically, if you've got somebody who is into this, like they're a yes, but not now, just sign them up for an account because when they are ready, you're going to be able, like, you don't have to worry about signing them up because they're already signed up. Right. Yes. It is more beneficial to you in terms of how you get paid for them to sign up with an order out of the gate, an order, you know, month over month, et cetera. We are incentivized to do that. But why lose, you know, a future sale because it's not right now, right? So if somebody is a yes, but they're a yes later, sign them up. You'll be able to, if you're doing your imports into your Get Oiling system uh, with your, um, uh, with with your VO file, then you're going to be able to uh, market to them, as Rebecca is saying, on an ongoing basis. Tell them more about products as you're telling the rest of your customer base about products. And of course, uh, they'll be hearing from Young Living directly, uh, which is awesome because Young Living is actually doing a fair amount of marketing now to customers, which is great. Okay. With offering a mentoring group program, is it more beneficial to offer a monthly or annual payment options uh, versus a three to four month term service? Tammy's question. It really, it's not really an either or, you know, it's it has a lot to do with the nature of your program 
the benefits it offers and what the mechanism of working with someone looks like. Um, if you are designing a service that is going to work for like continuity, right, you want them to be, you know, sticking with you year over year, month over month, uh, you're going to be creating and releasing content in a very different way than you would if the program is really designed to um, serve someone for three to four months and then send them on their way or move them, graduate them to the next thing that you offer. So I would say that the better choice, if we are going to create a good butter best here, the best choice is going to be to get a commitment to them for the full term, right? So if term is what you're looking for, term is three months, term is four months, term is a year, the best option is going to be to incentivize a paid in full because you're going to have less attrition that way, right? People are already invested, they're bought in. You could potentially make more money charging on a monthly basis, but you have a higher likelihood that you will have folks who who fall off for whatever reason, right? Um, so the best option in, in, in the case of programs like this is to get the full buy-in from someone for the full term of what you're creating. And then um, you want to basically give them incentive to take that action. And then you could provide other options. Um, they just need to be a little less attractive right? Because those do have the higher chance of you actually not having that client for the full term. All right, Dr. Brown, um, it's just very helpful if you see them at an event, or is this a conversation? Um, okay, got you. So I, I think, Dr. Brown, you're speaking to um, whether, like, what's what's the benefit of, of having someone sign up for a free account? So she's saying it, it's helpful if you see them in a, an event, um, don't buy later, visit website and order, they'll automatically be your customer and not an orphan and go to someone else. Yeah, that's right. It's better, like, again, it, is it best for you to sign them up with a full order so that they've got their, their repeat order and you get everything that you can out of that sale? Yeah, obviously. Um, but my gosh, why why would you keep them from signing up if they're saying yes now, even if they can't uh, get started later. All right. I'm so sorry to hear that, Adonza. It looks like WISE uh, has a, a wait list uh, for your market. But whatever the options that you do have available, if it's PayPal, if it's something else, you 100% can put a button on your site uh, from whatever that payment option is, where someone can click and then they can go and purchase um, on like via that payment provider. And actually what you could do, and, and this is a workaround, I've seen this done before in some markets, you can have a page on your website that is not publicly visible that you send them to. So if you're setting up a purchase on PayPal, for instance, and somebody buys on PayPal, then, um, you have the option in that payment you're setting up on PayPal to send them to a URL after purchase. So that URL can be that page that's not publicly available on your website, that maybe has a form for them to sign up and get all of their stuff from you, adds the campaign, adds the tag, et cetera. So you're really just in that isolated event of taking payment. Um, you are, you're sending them somewhere else, but you're sending them right back. So that is a workaround. I have seen it. Um, so whatever, um, there's got to be some kind of uh, a virtual payment option uh, for, for where you are. And uh, let's definitely um, keep this conversation going uh, in our Facebook group. I'm sure that there are other folks who would benefit uh, from, the, um, from the conversation taking place here about this. Thank you for sharing that with us. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being on this call and uh, and and for sharing your great questions. I am really excited for you to maybe share with us what it is that you are going to uh, be selling or getting people to register for on your site. We're excited to see you get into that action and, of course, see those bigger benefits of more people registering, more people getting started, more people paying um, with these new features. So we'll be back here same time next week. You guys have a great week. See you then.